Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is an interactive video about how to multiply fractions. So we're going to do some problems together on the first two pages of your notes, and then you have a chance to, to pause the video and try a couple problems on your own, and then at the end you can see how you did. All right, so really to multiply fractions, it's fairly simple uh, when compared to adding or subtracting fractions, where when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you need common denominators. Well, that's not the case uh, when you multiply fractions. So what I've done is I come up with a kind of three-step process on how to multiply fractions. So step number one is if you can, you want to simplify the fractions um, to make sure that they're in lowest terms. So for example, here we have 3 6 times 5 7. Well, I know 3 6 I can reduce down to 1 half, right? So I'm going to change that to 1 half. So that's step number one. Now step number two, what you do is you multiply the numerators. So what you do is our numerators are 1 and 5. So we're going to multiply 1 times 5, and this will give us 5. And then step number 3 is we're going to multiply the denominators. So our denominators are now 2 and 7. So 2 times 7 is 14. And guess what? That's it. That's your answer. So let's do number, uh, another one here. All right. Number, the next problem we have is 9 tenths times 1 fourth. So step number 1, can we simplify the fractions? And the answer is no. 9 tenths is reduced and one fourth is reduced, all right? And soon, you're gonna learn about how to cross reduce. But right now, all we're, all we're focusing on is just the, each individual fraction. So now we need to multiply the numerators. So nine times one is nine, and 10 times four is 40. So nine forties, that's our answer. All right, let's turn the page and talk about something called cross reducing, all right? Now, cross reducing is a way to really make your life easy when it comes to multiplying fractions. And what you do to cross reduce, it says, if possible, cross reduce by the greatest common factor. So let me show you what I mean by that. So take a look at this four here and a six here, okay? So they're, they're opposite fractions, all right? One is in the numerator, one's in the denominator. And notice they share a common factor of two because two times two is four and two times three is six. So I'm gonna write that down here. So four is two times two and six is two times three. Now, what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to reduce common factors. So I'm going to cross off a 2 from each one of these numbers here. And what's left over now is a, is a 2 here and a 3 here. So now I can just multiply. So now 2 times 5 is 10. And 7 times 3 is 21. And notice when you cross-reduce, your final answer will always be simplified. All right. So that's kind of a hidden uh, benefit of cross-reducing is at the end, you're done. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Here we can actually cross reduce two times. So we have three and nine. So um, I can reduce three and nine. I can make this a one and make this a three because three goes into three once and three goes into nine three times. But I can also reduce the eight and the four because the greatest common factor of eight and four is four. So four goes into four once and four goes into eight twice. Now that things are reduced, now I can just multiply the numerators. So one times two is two. And multiply the denominators. One times three is three. And our final answer, or our product, is two thirds. All right, so anytime you're multiplying fractions, see if you can cross reduce, and it makes things a lot easier. All right, so why don't you pause the video and try the your turn now problems. And when you're done, hit play. You can see how you did. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's see how to do with these practice problems. So step number one, it says, if possible, simplify each uh, problem by cross-reducing, and then two, multiply the fractions. All right, so for the first problem, we have two-fifths times 10 elevenths. And notice, we can cross-reduce the 10 and the five. So I know uh, the greatest common factor of 10 and five is five. So uh, five goes in the 10 twice, and five goes in the five once. Um, the two and the 11, that can't be uh, reduced, so now let's multiply. So two times two is four. And then the denominators, one times 11 is 11. And there's our answer. All right, the second problem, we have four sevenths times uh, seven eighths. And we can actually cross reduce twice here because seven and seven, those can become ones because seven goes into both number. And then four and eight, well, the greatest common factor of four and eight is four, right? So four goes into four once 
and four goes and the eight twice. So now we can multiply. One times one is one, and one times two is two, and our answer is one half. All right, the last one, nine tenths uh, times five twelfths. And this time, I, again, I can reduce twice. Uh, five and 10 have a greatest common factor of five. So five goes in the five once, and five goes in the 10 twice. Nine and 12 um, has a greatest common factor of three. Uh, three goes in the nine three times, and three goes in the 12 four times. So now we can multiply. Three times one is three, and two times four is eight, and our answer is three eighths, all right? Now, one last thing. Let's say for this last problem, we did not cross uh, reduce, right? And I did just nine times five, which is 45, and then 10 times 12, which is 120, all right? What you'd have to do now is you'd have to reduce 45 120 ths and eventually you would get three eighths, all right? So personally, I find it a lot easier just to cross reduce and then multiply, and then that's it. All right, how'd you do?